Modifications to a Stuart Beam engine, part 9, the final episode. Removing and refitting the slide valve 90 degrees from where it was originally fitted and hopefully it will work as it should. Then follows a lot of timing tweaking to make the slide valve work properly, admitting and exhausting at the right time relative to the position of the crankshaft. Changing the position of the slide valve inside the steam chest was a very simple job. First of all, I just need to remove the cover. The only problem I had here was on one of them, the entire stud unscrewed from the casting. This wasn't a problem and it went back in exactly the same way. I can't wait to get rid of this temporary air inlet pipe. I was going to fit a displacement lubricator to this engine, but it really didn't look right, so I'm not going to bother. My steam engine test plant, the one with the live steam injector, already has a displacement lubricator fitted to it. I'll use that. And here is the valve. Spot the deliberate mistake. It's fairly obvious now when I look at it, but it wasn't quite so obvious because I didn't really look closely. I assumed the builder had put it together the right way. The valve is not long enough in this position to fully cover the ports all the way. The valve just wasn't big enough, so both of the inlet ports were being uncovered momentarily at the end of each stroke. Here I'm changing the position of the valve and rotating it through 90 degrees. It was a very simple job, all I had to do was pull the steam chest away from the port face and rotate the slide valve through 90 degrees as shown here. To adjust the position of the valve, all I had to do was remove the valve gear mechanism then just rotate the threaded valve spindle to adjust the position of the valve. And here it is, covering both ports, which is what I want it to do. Not like it did when it was fitted the other way around. Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly, and that's what I'm doing at the moment, putting it all back together. It's a very simple job, although I really have left out my incessant tweaking of the position of the eccentric. Take it from me, it's in the right place. To be honest, at this stage, it was more or less in the right place, and I did do a bit of tweaking to get it into a better position. And here, if you look carefully, you will see the air is being admitted just before top dead center at both ends. The slight knock that you can hear is actually the big end of the connecting rod just knocking from side to side as it runs. This is a very common occurrence with model steam engines and it's easily fixed by wrapping a small piece of cotton thread around the crank pin to stop the big end from moving from side to side. And this cotton also soaks up some oil and makes the lubrication better. Although I haven't done this on the engine that I'm currently working on, I think it will be fine as it is. Time now to remove the temporary air inlet and fit a steam tap. The standard Stuart thread insert is a quarter by 32 threads per inch. As usual, to prevent steam and air leaks, I'm using Loctite 542 thread sealant on the threads. Unfortunately though, I made a mistake, like the hedgehog climbing off the hairbrush. The steam chest cover is fitted the wrong way up. All I need to do is undo it, rotate it through 180 degrees and fit it back to the steam chest. I'm running this part of the video quite fast because I don't wish to labour the point. This by the way is not a Stuart steam tap. It's one of a range of steam taps from a company in the USA called PM Research and they're very good. And now for the first compressed air test with the valve in the right place. And if you don't think this is an improvement, I suggest you watch the previous video. By the way, the red cross means don't do this. It's really stupid to handle the parts of an engine that are moving. Especially for me, because I'm a keyboard player. And this engine is powerful, it would make a bit of a mess of my fingers. I'm just checking the fits of parts, and they're all okay, and so are my fingers. The problem I find with grasshopper beam engines is, they're not quite as well balanced as other steam engines, because one part of the stroke is lifting the weight of the beam. 
So it's never really going to be quite as smooth as a horizontal engine or even a beam engine with a balanced beam. Here's a clip for all the keyboard warriors who tell me that I run miniature steam engines too fast, even though I always mention I'm doing it for test purposes. It's better that the engine fails on my workbench rather than when a customer buys it. As you can see, the engine passed the test with flying colours, and that concludes the series. Here it is, running in slow motion. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.